We've been playing some a lot of new tabletop games recently, but we haven't played any of them enough to really give a full-on episode. So we're just going to briefly talk about three we've played recently. The first one is... Castles of Burgundy. So, Castle of Burgundy, I we'll bought... consider these impressions, not reviews. Yeah, so I bought this because it was highly ranked on Board Game Geek, and I wanted to buy a new game. So I bought it, and I learned it, we played it. And playing it, it was a lot... It gave me that same feel. Not saying the game feels like Agricola. Learning it felt like Agricola, and where going through the rules is a whole bunch of shit, but then once you actually play, it's like... Oh, this game is pretty straightforward. Ah, and see, for me, it felt like Attica. Oh, with the hexes. Yes. Visually. Filling in the. No, also in terms of the actions I'm taking. Oh, filling in the hexes. The only difference mm. between this and Attica on that level is that there's the meta mechanic of you're gathering the tiles from a shared place rather than everyone has their own completely solitaire game. Yep. So here's how, here's how Castle of Burgundy works. You have a. Uh, an estate, which is a big plot of land that's a hexagon with a lot of little hexes in it. And there is a shared board from which you can acquire hex tiles and other goods and resources. What you want to do is on your turn, you roll some dice and those dice determine what actions will be available to you. You can use some resources to sort of modify the dice so it's not a complete luck fest like Settlers, but it does cost you more resources if you want to change your dice a lot. So you have to be efficient and sort of go with the flow instead of trying to fight you know, your way to, to do what you want. And you gather hexes and place them on your board. Whenever you, when you, basically you gather a hex with one action and you add the hex to your estate with a second action. When you add the hex to your estate, the hex, the tile you put does something. So if you add a castle to your estate, you get another action. If you add a building to your estate, it usually does a specific extra action. If you add animals to your estate, you get victory points based on the animals. You know, so you're trying to gather specific hexes to do specific things. Uh, but everyone else is grabbing at him too. So you're looking at what the other people are doing. If another guy's got sheep, do you want to take sheep away from him so he doesn't score a lot? Yes. But then you have to put the sheep somewhere. So you want to go get cows, which he's not getting, so you can score big, and then he takes a cow to stop you, and so on and so forth. Uh, is there anything else about this game? I think it's really good, and I want to play it more. It's really fun. It's relatively light. Uh... I think it's going to break down for us relatively quickly and that the decisions are pretty obvious. Once you figure well, out... Well, they do have alternate boards, which, do. which can really mix things up. Basically, it's going to be like Attica. It's really fun until you figure out a few reasonably optimal paths, and then it'll become pretty random, and I don't know anyone who's going to be willing to put forth whatever effort it would take to step up the game. It's going to have an end game like Agricola in the sense that among skilled players of Agricola, the game really just comes down to whether or not you can cock other people out of certain resource things at key times. But cocking someone out of something also cocks yourself, right? So and yeah, but that matters more. You want you yeah. want to play your optimal, you know, solo while simultaneously cocking mm -hmm. the other players as yep. much as you can. But that's a really kind of third or fourth order skill. Yep. I worry the game's going to break down in that. In I that. don't know. But the other thing is, right? A lot of games out there tend to be when they, where there's a lot of different ways to get points, a lot of different paths to victory, it tends to be the way to go is to pick one and min-max it, right? Go all in on that and all not in on any other things. And each player picks a different thing to go all in on. If two people go all in on the same thing, they compete and thus bringing each other down below the players who go solo. So like one guy went all animals, he'd win, but if two people went all animals, they would lose, and the guy who went all castle would win, right? So, But in this game... You sort in order to get enough victory points, like Agricola. You need to get victory points from all the different areas. You can't min you can't maximize one thing. That won't be enough points. So in that sense, it's sort of just like who does better overall, uh, you know. And there isn't really this sort of you know picking a thing or any particular strategy. You sort of roll your dice and figure out the way to get the most victory points with what you got to work with. 